Hi guys, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm making cheddar cheese meatloaf. Alright guys, I'm using my Copper Chef for this. You can use any kind of mixing bowl or baking pan you want, but since I'm doing it in the Copper Chef, I'm going to mix and bake in the same pan. That makes it nice because you don't have any uh, extra dirty dishes. Now I'm going to start by cracking one egg in here, and I have about two pounds of ground beef in here, and this isn't lean, so I'm going to let it bake for a little while, and then we're going to drain the excess grease off. Now I'm going to put about a teaspoon of accent in and that's optional guys that just gives it an extra depth of flavor I'm gonna put a teaspoon of cumin in it's gonna give it a nice earthy flavor and guys cumin is one of those seasonings that are underrated and underused it's really delicious I'm gonna go for about a teaspoon of salt and I'm gonna go for a teaspoon of black pepper and guys, this is an Amish recipe that I am modifying to modern day uh, standards. Okay, and I'm going to put in a little bit of Italian breadcrumb. You can also use plain breadcrumb this, I just happen to have Italian. I'm going to go for about a quarter of a cup. And I'm going to add in about two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. And if I happen to go over, we're going to have that works, guys. You can never have too much cheese. So there's one healthy cup. Okay, that's about two cups, guys. Now I'm gonna get in here and mix this up. I just wanna blend everything all together. And like I said, the beauty of doing it in the Copper Chef is you only use one pan. You're not dirty in a bunch of dishes. But this would also work nice if you use a stoneware pan. You can mix and bake in the same pan. You just wanna get your cheese blended in there really good mixed in there really good I should say and I'm gonna go ahead and scrape the pan and if there's a little bit of cheese left in the pan that's not gonna hurt anything but if you were to do this in a mixing bowl then your pan would be completely clean when you put your meatloaf in there but like I says I'm just saving extra dishes okay now that my meatloaf is coming together good I'm going to section this into two equal size meatloafs and I'm going to go ahead and pack them tight, form them into meatloafs, get them down here in a pan. And my one meatloaf might be a hair bigger than the other one, but that's okay. Okay, now I'm going to finish forming this meatloaf, get it in a pan here, wash my hands, and then I'll bring it back. All right, guys, you might notice something a little different. I forgot to put in my onion. I added one medium onion I diced up. I had to destroy my meatloafs and remix them and put the onion in. So make sure you do that before you form your meatloafs. Now I'm going to put this in a 350 degree oven on cover for about 20 minutes. What that's going to do is that's going to cook all that excess grease out of the brown beef because that's not lean. I'd rather use a fatty beef because it makes more moist meatloaf. After the 20 minutes are up, I'll pull it out and drain the grease off. I'll bring you guys back and we'll move on to the next step. Okay guys, I'm not my 20 minutes up and I drained off as much of that excess grease that I could get off without spilling my meatloaf out of the pan. I'm going to put some barbecue sauce on top here. You can just use any brand you like, your favorite kind. This happens to be hickory and brown sugar barbecue sauce. just want to put a healthy dose on each one. You just want to spread it around on your meatloaf. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to smear my barbecue sauce as evenly as I can get it on here and I'm gonna put these back in that 350 degree oven for 40 more minutes uncovered to finish baking because they're still raw in the middle they just bake for a little while to get the excess grease out of them so I'm gonna get this back in the oven let it finish baking and then when it's done I'll bring you guys back alright guys this is done baking I left it rest for a few minutes let's go ahead and uh, fix up a plate and see what we got guys I went ahead and I topped my meatloaf with a little more barbecue sauce for extra flavor I made some mashed potatoes with cream corn and some green beans that go with this let me get in here and try this meatloaf is nice and tender you can see it's cooked through looking nice and moist that's really good guys and it really didn't even need the, the additional barbecue sauce in it because you can taste the barbecue flavor through it as it soaked down in. Nice and cheesy, nice and moist, tender. That's really delicious, guys. All right, there you have it. Cheddar cheese meatloaf. Give it a try. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you.